Hey, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today it's ranunculus planting time. So let's see how we did it. Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we're planting the ranunculus. We started with the pre-sprout method. We've already got some of it in. This is a, our first batch was the Amidine Pastel Mix. These guys were started, if you remember our video, we'll put a link up there to it. It was about the beginning of October. It's now the first, second of November today. And we're off a bit on planting them because we've had a real bad spat of cold weather. And as you might see from beside us over here, just in the last day or two, this is what the freezing weather did to our sun and geraniums. So the plants aren't dead, but we'll be cutting them back. And then we also lost a bunch of our fall snaps that were just at the bloom stage and they're kind of like got hit too. So, but some of these guys on the snaps will pop, pop back if we don't freeze too much more. So it's a little messy on that side of the tunnel, but this is the side I really wanted to talk about today was this over here. Okay. These guys have been growing, um, we treated them with worm tea, we bubbled them in worm tea if you remember that, and then we treated them with FPJ and the BRV, which is fermented plant juice and brown rice vinegar uh, prior to planting. And some folks are saying, oh my god, you're using vinegar, but look at the roots on these guys. Matter of fact, since we're a little bit overdue in getting these guys into the ground, they've kind of come out of the six packs, but they're nice and healthy and uh, they're ready to go. <laughs> so what we're gonna be doing is, and we've already started dibbling out the holes, and we're gonna space these guys roughly about nine to 10 inches apart within the row, and then about 10 inches in between the rows. So we get three rows on our 36 inch bed in here. And if you look at these guys, you go, wow, they're already rocking and rolling. So once we get them all transplanted, then we'll, we will fertilize them in again, hit them again with the FPJ and BRV, as well as um, we'll probably, in a week, see how things go, we'll hit them with a little um, uh, fish hydroslate too. So we'll just see how things go. And um, probably then the next thing to do for us would be about two to three weeks later, we'll hit them with a worm tea. So we'll just kind of keep that going, we want to keep the nitrogen level low, but we want to keep, um, you know, the basic nutrients and fertility that worm teas and, and things like that provide, and the growth hormones and the biostimulant from the FPJ and the BRV. So we'll see how these guys come out. We've already got our hoops set up for frost protection. We'll definitely be putting those on tonight, the Agrabon over it tonight, um, because we're supposed to get down to about 35. I don't trust it, we'll probably freeze. And so, Although these guys are, you know, they're pretty uh, acclimated, um, still want to make sure we protect them. So this is a typical six pack. Roots coming out the bottom. They look pretty good. You're this a is... soil block guy. Yeah. How come well, you weren't using soil blocks? We had to use it because I couldn't just figure out a way to get um, the corm, which was bigger than the dibble would make on a soil block. And um, we were not looking to get a huge, um, we didn't want to make a huge soil block, you know, like a three or four inch soil block. So we opted to go with um, six packs that, like you get bedding plants with at the uh, home center nurseries. And the roots are pretty good. I mean, they're nice and white. They look really good. Uh, the holes we dibble a little wide to make sure they go in, but you can see the planting is just, just slip it right in. and. You know, off we go. In the past, when we've pre-spreaded, have we had that kind of green growth plus roots? Well, you got to remember, this is like a plant that's a month old. Okay. So it never went through a dark and cool pre-sprout. It just went immediately to time to grow. So um, these roots, yeah, are bigger than a pre-sprout because what you're trying to do on a pre-sprout to get them just when they're just starting to show white roots and stick them in. But the nice thing about this is the plant has had time to acclimate to a lot of nutrients, um, get some photosynthesis going, 
and um, we shouldn't have too much root transplant shock. But the thing with the FPJ and the BRV treatment, uh, after we get everything in, that'll help with uh, that, that transplant shock. And this is a no-till bed. Last year we had tulips on it. I have a video on that too. Link up there, look <laughs> for the little eye. And um, so after the tulips were finished, the bed actually laid fallow for the summer because we didn't have anything to put on it. But this is a well decomposed compost, a couple of years old. And um, it's just really easy to dibble into. Ground didn't have to be broken up. We didn't use any broad fork or anything like that. So you just, uh, after we cleaned off any residue on the bed, we just uh, watered it for a few days to get the uh, soil all moistened up and everything's really good to go. How did, to how did you um, prepare these green ranunculus to be out in the cold? Um, after they sprouted at about two weeks, we moved them to our, what we call our propagation Where house. did you pre-sprout them? Uh, we did that in the greenhouse. We didn't use any heat mats because at that time, you know, it was still pretty warm in the day, warm at night in, in the 60s and 50s. So that was actually perfect for ranunculus. Uh, but it was just a matter of uh, giving them some, some protection from the elements um, to kind of keep it a little more stable on the temperature. Uh, these guys have been out in the propagation house, which absolutely has no heat or anything like that. It's just an ambient day. Uh, you ventilate and at night you close it up. Um, we didn't use any frost blankets on them until this week. since we Only because they were at the temperature was down at right. 24. Well, actually we got to 22 on Tuesday night. So mm -hmm. Wednesday night. So they've gone through a real cold spell for about a week. Right. And the leaves are, 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 you know, they're healthy. They're not wimpy or anything. You can kind of see when I'm going like this, it, you know, they're pretty rigid. So they're not like floppy or anything like that. So they should be just, they should be really good. And I, I attribute it to the worm tea giving a real good nutrient boost. Like this leaf here must have been touching the fabric cloth or something, got a little tinged. But, um, you know, I think just the general methodology is, is going to be a success. At this point, it <laughs> looks good. Now, what happens what after happens that? now <laughs> is, we'll see. But this looks pretty good. And the nice thing about it is if there are plants that don't look really robust and they're kind of, you know, weeny, we don't even bother putting them in. It's not worth it. Only we, the good getting. That's, that's the whole idea. Because so, we had, last year we had some really weeny plants that they looked good at pre sprout. They looked good, but they just yeah. didn't go anywhere. Right. It they was. Just, they just didn't. They. It was frustrating to sit there and look at them and go, "Why aren't you growing?" Yeah, they just didn't. Never got the size. So putting these guys in is really easy. Um, oh, I just kind of make sure the roots are a little bit loosened up. If some of them break off, that's not that big of a deal. And then stick them in. And. Uh, Sure the compost is around the base of the plant. So are your roots touching compost or are they touching soil? That's the thing is this compost layer is about an inch and a half thick and I am dibbling all the way through it to the actual soil underneath. So these roots are, are not growing in the urban waste compost even though it's pretty well well rotted after a year. Um, it's still something that doesn't have that much nutrient in it. So we want to make certain that the roots, I guess I stumbled upon some ants, the roots get into the um, into the ground. That's real important, isn't it? Very important. You try to grow stuff in urban compost waste directly, the nutrient level just isn't there and also has a difficult time holding moisture. So particularly, it's a great mulch for on top of the soil, but for growing in, it uh, leaves a lot to be desired. It's like on, we had a crop failure on the Celosia. Yep. And we transplanted, transplanted. We learned this lesson the hard way. We transplanted using mini blocks directly, and they didn't get good contact with the soil underneath. And, and they and dried out. Yeah, we couldn't keep the compost wet enough. To Even pre-watering. Yeah. So that was that was a mistake, and that's why this looks really nice and moist. But we're also making sure we get to the soil level. Yep. So 
they've been all dibbled down to, you know. Using my doubting dibbler, I know that's not trademarked, but this is a design that um, was inspired by Charles Dowding. He, he basically kind of did the same thing with the shovel handle and sharpen it to a point that's about nah, 30 inch or so long. I just took an old piece of PVC, uh, one and a half inch, and screwed it into the top of the handle. Makes a nice, nice ergonomic tool. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we just dibble in the ground. I'm not gonna get too specific about the inches. What I do is I just try to get the uh, get it approximate, and when I put it in, make sure I'm hitting ground contact, and then turn it a few times to widen the hole, and just widen the hole, and just keep going. So I'll go all the way down, do one row, come back, do the next, and then come back and do the last. That way I know I'm I keep them lined up. It's just my my way of doing things, but. Sure, there's a bunch of different ways of getting there done, but this one works pretty good. Well, folks, we're just about finished planting this row. It's been about, mm, I guess, 45 minutes or so dibbling them and getting them in. I've got another 150 or so left to put in but I thought we'd just wrap it up today and just uh, Say you know that the new technique seems to be working and um, Want to thank you guys all for coming along today and you know just as a follow-up to see how it goes We'll probably do another film here in a few weeks uh, Maybe towards the end of November just to see how things adapted to uh, Once they were actually in the ground and dealt with the weather and all that kind of stuff so like I talked about earlier, we're, we're going to do some fertilization of these guys, but it's going to be pretty low nitrogen, uh, just mostly minerals and some worm tea, and uh, see if we can get these guys to looking real good for spring. So thanks for watching today, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Check out our other videos and our other playlists. We've got a lot of interesting things out there, and as always, have a good day. Bye-bye. Hi.